No matter what controller you've got, Calibrating your sticks is essential to getting the most out of it. If you don't have your sticks calibrated correctly, then you might not be able to arm the quad. You might get this annoying throttle warning all the time when you power up. Tango 2, I'm looking at you. You might not be able to enter your OSD by putting in the stick commands or any of the other stick commands might not work. Or you, everything might seem to work okay, but like the quad might spin faster to the left than to the right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly calibrate the sticks on your controller. And if you are an old grizzled hand and you're thinking, I already know how to calibrate my sticks, Bardwell, why are you insulting my intelligence? There is something on this radio specifically that I'm willing to bet that most of you are not calibrating. You're overlooking it. And uh, there's something you need to do when you calibrate all radios, but this one in specific that can cause that throttle warning when you first power up. I'm going to teach you how to correctly calibrate the sticks in your radio. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Before we get to the, like the gotcha part of the video where we find out if you know the thing that I'm claiming that you don't know, let's just talk about what calibration is and why it's necessary for the people who are maybe new here. And if you already know that, which I know a lot of you do, there are chapter markers down in the timeline. You can just skip ahead or there's timestamps in the video description if you prefer. What is calibration and why is it necessary? Well, we've got some gimbals here. And when I move the gimbal, the gimbal outputs an electrical signal to the processor in the radio that tells it how far the gimbal is moving. But due to manufacturing and electrical tolerances, we can't just say that this particular value represents full left stick or full right stick. It's just they're not consistent and repeatable enough for that. There has to be some way of calibrating that. So when you calibrate the gimbals uh, on a radio, what you do is you center the gimbals and then well, let's, let's just go through it. So on my radio, I have a separate sys and model key. And if your radio is like that, like the Radio Master, the Jumper and all the radios in that family, you're going to press the sys key. That'll take you to the tools menu. And then you're going to page until you get to the hardware menu and then at the top you'll see calibration. If I then activate calibration and then press enter one more time to start, the first thing it asks me to do is center my sticks and then it asks me to move the sticks and it, I don't just wanna move them like randomly, I wanna move them all the way to the edges of their movement. And what the radio is trying to do is figure out how far, what does the electrical signal look like from the gimbal when the gimbal is fully deflected. And so you'll see if I just barely move it to the left, it jumps way to the left. And the, the radio is like, okay, is this all the way to the left? Is this all the way to the left? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fully deflect it and now it knows what all the way to the left looks like. And I'm gonna do the same for the right, down, up, and I'm gonna do the same for the other gimbal. And now it knows what our up, down, left, right look like. Some people prefer to also go to the diagonals since on some gimbals, especially lower quality or less expensive gimbals, uh, the, the down signal may not be the same when you go down and left, down and right versus just straight up and down. So you may want to move them in a full circle, but that's, that's calibration. Now, if you've got a Tango 2 or any of the other like Free Sky radios or jumper radios that don't have a separate menu and sys key, what you're going to do instead is you're going to long press the menu key and that's going to do more or less the same thing. It's going to bring up the tools menu and then we're going to press the page key to get to the hardware screen. There at the top again is calibration, but TBS has you do it a little bit differently. Three, two, one. TBS has you go through Three, this game. Two, where you Three, move them two, between one. predetermined positions. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. I always feel like I'm under so much pressure Three, to get it done. Two, exactly right. My fingers are getting Three, two, sweaty. One. What if I slip? What if I screw it up? Three, two, one. Ah. Three, two, but with a little bit of practice, one. you get it done. And then after the radio gets done calculating constants, whatever that is, they ask you to do the same up, down, left, right, and it has the same function. 
Now, here's the first mistake that some people make when they calibrate their sticks. And this is what causes this warning to pop up when you power up your Tango 2 or other radios too, but... Welcome to Tango 2. Throttle warning. Throttle warning. Your throttle's not all the way down. That's what that means. If you power up the radio and the throttle is not all the way down, it's not going to power up because... Why? Well, multi-rotors don't care, but airplanes, some airplanes, especially electric airplanes where you don't have to start a liquid motor, if the controller connects and the throttle is raised, the airplane will just be like, okay, let's go to full throttle. And the prop will just start spinning and that could be dangerous. So the radio will not power up if the throttle is raised. And it's a, not a bad idea for multi-rotors, but they're a little bit, they have a few more safeguards than airplanes do. And so, okay, well, fine. I'm just going to push the throttle down. See, the throttle is all the way down. Okay, let's try again. Welcome to Tango 2. Throttle warning. But the throttle is all the way down. I swear. But look. If I push on the throttle, oh, what has happened? What has happened is that especially if your radio has plastic gimbals, not like the all-metal gimbals. These are the AG01 all-metal CNC gimbals for the Radio Master. I've got an installation video talking about them in more detail. I'll put a link to that in the video description. But if you have plastic gimbals, like most of the radios that most people in FPV are using anyway, they've got a little bit of flex at the bottom. So here I've lowered the throttle and it's touching, but you can see that if I put just a little bit of force, not like a lot of force, it will continue to flex down. And if I page over to the, let's go numerical. If I page to the numerical readout, where's the throttle? Okay, so here's the throttle right here. This is the throttle value. And you'll see that if I lower it all the way down, it's reading 93%. It should read minus 100%, but it's reading minus 93%. If I push a little further, we can get it to minus 100%. But I have to actually put a fair bit of pressure. And the reason that's the way it is, is because when I calibrated the radio, I used too much force. You see, when you calibrate the radio, you're telling the radio, this is where the stick is going to be when it's all the way down. And when you're going through that calibration routine, you will often use a little bit of more force than you do in real life. In real life, you just go, okay, throttle's down. You're not pushing on it. But when you're doing the calibration, you're like, ah, I got a, I got a, a calibrating. I'm going over here. And that's true for all radios, not just the Tango, although I'm picking on the Tango because, like I said, it is a common issue there. So here's rule number one. When you calibrate, use the least amount of force possible because that will bring those endpoints in. And then in real life, when you're actually kind of pushing on the stick, you will always be guaranteed to reach the endpoint. And in real life, when you just gently touch the throttle down to the bottom, it'll read 100%. Calculating constants. And now I'm going to just barely touch the stick to the top and bottom and the left and the right. I should probably go up and down a couple more times. Okay, great. And now... Welcome to Tango 2. Problem solved. And in fact, if we look at the channel right here, we can see as I lower it down, it goes to minus 100 without any special effort. And if I push it further, if I use more force, it doesn't matter. It just stays at minus 100. It can't go past minus 100. That's the first tip. Now, the second mistake that people make when they calibrate is they don't calibrate all of their controls. And there is a control on the Radio Master specifically that I'm willing to bet that the majority of you are overlooking. So let's go ahead in and let's run the calibration routine. Uh, and... Yes, we have to calibrate our sticks, but notice it says center sticks, pots, and sliders and press enter. Yes, these side sliders here need calibration and these potentiometers here need calibration. All of your analog controls need calibration. So we're going to center the, the pots, the sliders, and the sticks and we'll press enter. And then when we move them, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move the sticks and again, as gently as possible, touching the top and the bottom as gently as possible. And then we're going to move 
the pots and again as gently as possible. It's really easy to apply enough pressure to throw off that end point. And if you're trying to use those knobs to do something like, you know, flaps or whatever, then you want that full throw. You want to be able to get the full throw. But the control that I bet that you're overlooking, if you're like, yeah, I know I knew you had to move the sliders, it says it on the screen, is the six position here. Look down here. That's the, this is actually internal to the radio, just treated like another potentiometer. And so it also needs calibration. So watch, if I go six here, you see I'm on position six, but it hasn't moved. It hasn't figured out what the endpoint is yet. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one, and now it's working correctly. And if you've ever had your six position not working, that's probably why you ran calibration, but you didn't calibrate it. If you knew that, go down in the comments and let me know. I'm willing to bet most people didn't. If you didn't know it, go down in the comments and say, I didn't know that. I mean, my, my analytics will appreciate all the engagement. I'm willing to bet a lot of you didn't know it. Now we're properly calibrated. And that brings us to the end of the video. Simple thing, very easy to mess up. Uh, and in the case of, it's so freaking annoying I picked on the Tango 2 because I hear a lot of reports of it. it. It's probably not because there's anything wrong with the Tango 2's gimbals. It's probably more because the way that they go through the calibration routine is a little bit more prone to pressing too hard. I don't know. Uh, but I used to have the same problem on my original RadioMaster TX-16S with the throttle and I had to redo the calibration using as little force as possible. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel, or, or maybe join my Patreon, or, or click, one of, click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>